What is happening guys? Welcome back. So, as you can see by the thumbnail at the title of this video, we may have been out and purchased ourselves a little donor car for the engine for the Mark II Polo. Um, in the chaos that ended up being the week, we completely forgot to film an intro to the video, so here's the intro to it. Let's join me a few days ago when we're in the car, heading over to have a look at a potential donor car. Right, so I apologise if this video is quite shaky. Um, in the rush to get out, because it's all a little bit, as Dan does, a little bit last minute. Um, yeah, we forgot to get the GoPro and everything out. So the only thing I've got on me is my phone. But we're in the car, uh, trailer is on. Uh, massive thank you to Graham Good Racing for yeah lending me the trailer and borrowed it a few times. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for lending me the trailer. Uh, we're heading over now to go and have a look at it, see what it's like. I've told myself I'm not doing what I normally do, which is just go over and blindly buy something. We're gonna look at it properly, we're gonna assess it, we're gonna work out if it's exactly what we want, if the parts on it are what we want, and we're not just gonna blindly buy something. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell myself anyway. Um, yeah, sorry if it's a bit shaky, it's just sat on a phone mount on the dashboard. Uh, right, we'll head over there. I don't know if we'll film anything when we're there, um, and then we'll reveal to you what we've bought and what engine we're gonna be using in the Polo. So we're in the car on the way back, I've done the deal, we've purchased the donor car for the engine, um, but there's a few other bits on it that are going to be usable, which is nice. Um, I didn't film anything while we were there, obviously. It's just really awkward filming uh, when you're trying to buy a car from someone, and I didn't tell him what we were buying it for until the deal was done, in case he didn't want me doing what I'm doing with it. Um, but yeah, we bought it, it's on the trailer, we're headed back. Um, we'll get it off, get it in the unit, and we'll reveal what engine we're going to be putting into the Mark II Polo. Now don't judge me on how it was struck down, we haven't got any wheel straps, so we did the best with what we'd got. So, we've had a bit of a move about in the workshop and the donor vehicle is now in here. And the donor vehicle we have purchased is a 6N2 Polo GTI. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I've put posts up about looking for one of these over the past couple of weeks because they are pretty hard to find. Um, prices on them are going up. They're less and less on the road, um, which is, I suppose I feel a bit bad about taking this one to pieces. Although the fact that it's a five door, really not that bothered about it. Um, yeah, they're getting hard to find. Um, they're, they're a cool little car. And yeah, they were owned by people that crashed them. So there aren't many left on the road. Um, this one, like I said earlier in the video, it popped up, well, I spotted it on Facebook. It had been up for a while, and the guy dropped the price a few times. Um, so we just thought, do you know what? He dropped it to about where we wanted to be. We knew that we could, or thought we could probably wiggle a little bit more out of it. Um, so we, yeah, borrowed the trailer from Graham, jumped in the car, rolled over, and ended up coming back with it. So as you can see by the little bit that I've just ran, it's hardly the cleanest, hardly the tidiest, hardly the worst well looked after car. Um, we've got rot down here on this wing, the scratches and dents and dings all over it. The electric windows don't work on the driver's door for either window. Um, the back seats are missing as we've already shown. Um, yeah, the wheels are absolutely disgusting. I imagine, or looking at it, it has been probably one of the ultimate Chavmobiles with Halford's finest edge speakers fitted to it. Um, head unit doesn't work. I've had a quick fiddle around with that and I can't get it working. I don't know what it is. It's not the fuse down there. It's not the fuse on there. Whether the head unit itself is gone, I don't know. Um, but when we went to look at it, uh, the guy took me out for a drive in it. It did what it needed to do. He gave it some in all five gears, gave it some from standstill. Um, the brakes work, it did what it needed to do, it seems okay, it pulled, it did what it wanted to do. Um, 
I did take the stuff to do a compression test on the engine because of it's basically the same engine that was in the Lupo and obviously what happened with the Lupo and the uh, bores um, on that engine we've not got the best history with this engine but hopefully this one will be okay but I just thought compression test in a car that you're looking at buying on someone's drive is a little bit of a step too far um, at this price point anyway um, so yeah we went looked at it come back with it hopefully my decision is going to be the right decision um, the reason we've gone for a complete car or this complete car is in my head and from the research I've done we should be able to harvest a few of the bits off of it so suspension on the mark ii we should be able to use the rear coilovers on this which they are coilovers they're not the newest or cleanest but hopefully we can salvage them and put them on and it will be okay um the front and i believe the rear brakes should fit onto the setup we've got in here so that's a saving of not having to buy any calipers as long as these ones are okay and free and we clean them up paint them discs don't look amazing but don't look horrendous and behind those wheels you're not gonna be able to see them so if that's going to save us a little bit and mean that we can have more money to play in other areas then I think that is a little win as well. Um, yeah, it's it's not the cleanest, it's not the tidiest, but for what we want, which is lurking under this bonnet, which is the ARC 1.6 16 valve, 125 horsepower engine, and it's got a form of um, a an aftermarket exhaust on it, which my plan with that is as well, if it's stainless or half decent metal, we should be able to clean it up and cut it and adapt it, maybe with a few extra pieces, to fit onto that car um, and save us a little bit of money because a custom exhaust could really blow the budget out of the water. So, what we need to do now is get that on the lift. It is currently Thursday evening. I've been waiting for three days for the suspension to turn up for that car so that we could put the suspension on it get it rolled off the lift and get this onto the lift to start taking it to pieces because we've got to have the loom out of the engine out of it and ready to send away on Monday morning. Um, so that's going to a guy who's going to integrate the loom so that we can just plug it in play. He said he can get it back to me for next week. So if we can get the engine in next week, the loom can come back and we should be able to get it running in that shell by the end of the next week, which would be absolutely amazing. So what we need to do now, like I say, Suspension's not turned up, so underneath it, we've got a pallet with some casters on. We'll lower that body shell onto there, hopefully not crushing the floors, push it out of the way, which will get the GTI onto the lift, and we shall start, hopefully, taking some bits off it, or at least we'll first have a look under it, see what condition it's in, and then we'll start taking bits off it. Good morning. So we're on a new day, and we're going to begin today on stripping the polo and starting to get the engine out, get the loom off, get it ready to send off. But we've got Simon from Dub Duck Shop, who's come over, because uh, we're going to do everything properly. We need to get the aircon gas removed from the car, just to do it all safely, all nicely, and get it disposed of properly, so we're not ruining the environment. So Simon's getting his stuff out, he's going to get the aircon gas removed, and then we should be pretty safe to start ripping everything out of this car. So time lapse on, we'll get that sorted out, and then we'll get it in the air. Have a quick look underneath, show you what it's like underneath, and then we'll get on stripping the car. Right, so Simon's been and done the aircon gas thing, whatever it is. Um, we put it on and there was no pressure in the system, um, which means there was no gas in it anyway. Uh, but we ran it anyway for five minutes to take stuff out. It took nothing out, so we're safe to know that there is no aircon gas in it. So we've got the car up on the lift, and first thing looking under here, lambda sensor. No wire coming from it. But underneath the car, it doesn't look too bad. Engine, nice and dry. Gearbox, nice and dry. There's a little bit of weepage from around the back which is probably from um, this drive shaft seal or flange, whatever you want to call it. Exhaust has been gummed up, which is to be expected. It looks like I've had a go at welding it on here. Um, it's had a decap pipe on it, which is literally just the pipe. Um, and then it's got this exhaust system all the way back here, which is knocking on everything. Um, comes around here to the back box here. Now, this isn't the most amazing and nice looking bit of kit, but... It'll do us for now, I think. I think we'll probably try and use this and try and use these bits along with some other bits and tidy the welds up. Um, but the manifold, I think it's just really that centre section there that needs replacing. The rest of it, we might hopefully be able to do something with. Um, floors, I don't know whether this is rot or this is just under seal, um, but it's standard. It's been crushed. Um, under it isn't actually too bad. It's, 
yeah, it's it's to, what's to be expected, I think, from a car of this age. Um, brakes, I think, our plan should work and should be okay. But we're not really interested in the shell. Um, we only want sort of the engine gearbox and things. So I'm happy that there's no leaks on the engine underneath. Um, yeah, it's what it is. It's what it is for the car. So we'll get it back down on the floor. Uh, we'll let it get warm. And then I think what we're going to do first thing is we'll compression test the engine just to make sure it's okay. And fingers crossed, we're okay on the compression side of things. If that's all good, we're sure. Or if it, even if it's not, we've got no choice. This engine's going in. It'll go in. If it's not, the compression's no good. We'll get it in, get it running, get it done. And then we'll have to sort another engine out. At some point, we need this engine to get this car running. Right, so we've let the car get warm. So it's about 80-ish degrees now. I, while it was getting warm, I've taken the arch lines out so we can get ready to take the front bumper and everything off so we've got a bit more ease of access to get in to get the engine out and hopefully, I think the front panel comes off so it should be really easy to get out. Um, oh, tripping over stuff so I'm working in a mess. Um, I've whipped the plugs out which don't look amazing but don't look horrendous. Um, we've whipped them out and cleaned it all out and we've now got the compression tester on there. So this is just a pressure gauge which basically measures the pressure in the cylinders um, and you want all four to be similar and I can't remember exactly what it was now. I'll go online and look and put it on the screen. Um, but what, as long as all four are about the same, we should be okay. I think it's about 140 PSR, I can't remember. So we'll turn it over now. I've disconnected the injectors and obviously the, the plugs are out and I've disconnected the coil as well so that's not trying to spark. So we'll get the GoPro over here, crank it and see what it does. So cylinder one, we're over 150. I think that is good. Cylinder two, we're 150, so that's good. No! No, so we're down on cylinder three at 90. So we're 60 PSI down on that cylinder, so. We're down on that cylinder, which is not good. Oh, cylinder four, we're at 150. So, we're down on cylinder three, which is not good. Let's just make sure. Do it again, just to double check. Make sure it was making a good seal. Well, it was holding pressure, so it was making a good seal. We know it was. Yeah, so we're down on cylinder three, which is not good. But we haven't really got a choice at the moment. Um, budget is now obviously spent on the engine and the donor or whatever. Um, it will be okay to drive. I think it's just not happy um, and we haven't got the money to go rebuilding the engine at the moment so I think all we really can do is just just carry on knowing that cylinder three isn't the happiest and I've got a feeling it's going to be uh, the bores or the rings the same as it was with the Lupo engine. Um, yeah, disappointing. But we haven't really got a choice. We've just got to push on, continue, um, and we'll have to do something about it once everything's built and in the car. Um, we'll have to possibly get another engine and get that sorted out. Oh, well, we'll continue.
So after a few hours, engine is out. We've got all of the loom disconnected um, in the engine bay. The only one thing now is it going through the bulkhead into the car. So we need to go into the car, dig the loom out from inside the car. We need to find the immobilizer box as well. And I think we need to get the ignition barrel off. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll take it off. Anyway, we have got the ECU that is under the bonnet. So that is good to go. Um, a couple of other bits I've just harvested from the car as well um, are the front brakes, which are Lucas 54 calipers. Got 54 on them, just there. So they're Lucas 54 calipers, which means we will very easily be able to turn these into um, G60 brakes. So um, yeah, be 280 mil um, front brakes on it, which are massive for what the car's gonna be. Um, so we can use the calipers. We need to get some different carriers. I don't know if the discs are gonna work and they've got a bit of a lip on them um, and the pads are obviously shot, but the caliper is the expensive bit. The carriers, I think we can get new carriers and we might need adapter brackets um, to adapt the caliper carry up to the hub, but that's that. Rear brakes, we've got the rear brakes off as well. Calipers are sat down there and the caliper carriers one of them is, I don't know, on the floor over there, but the other one is bolted onto the polo. So that bolted straight on, which is a win. So we can use the rear brake straight off this to go onto that as well. So it's on the floor now. Um, I've just put the wheels back on with no discs and brakes and things on just so that we can push the car forward, start getting the interior out and try and find this mobilized box. Progress has been made, so we've managed to get the dashboard out um, and we're slowly dissecting it to get the wiring loom out, but what an absolute nightmare. Dashboard is down there on the floor. Is it just me that's thinking that dashboard might look quite good in the Mark II Polo? Maybe we'll have to offer it in and see if it'll fit. Um, but the wiring is just, that's in the engine bay, plus there's a loom on the engine. And then in here, there's just wires absolutely everywhere. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to call it a day for now. We need to empty the van because we've got to go out tomorrow and pick some parts up. Right, as ever, we're running out of time yet again. It's late Saturday afternoon. We need to get this video out in the morning. Uh, the car's still sat here as it was. Um, loom is half out. We're still, we managed to get the dashboard out, which put up a fight. We've still got to disconnect the rest of the loom to get it out and get it sent off on Monday. Um, but like I say, we're running out of time. So... Should we have a roundup of money and hours um, that we've spent on the project so far? So back to the trusty whiteboard. Um, let's talk some numbers. So the Polo, which now the engine being the way that it is, probably wasn't the best of buys, cost me £1,100. Now, yeah, I'm feeling pretty having slept on it i'm feeling really quite deflated to be honest with this engine and the way that it is really it needs the rings doing or something doing with that cylinder but at the moment we haven't got the bullet budget so we are going to have to unfortunately just put it in tidy it up clean it up make it look nice put it in until we can afford to do it we still want to try and hit the five grand target with the, bu the budget but the car's not going to be running properly I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, my, my head's all over the place after finding that out yesterday. Um, so, yeah, we've just got to press on. Anyway, Polo cost £1,100, meaning that the total spent so far is £2,716.61, leaving £2,283.50. 39 pence which really 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 isn't a lot when we've got probably the best part of a grand on paint materials plus other items for the car that we are inevitably going to need along the way um and then we need to do something with seats and interior although the color's been chosen that is 
happening now that is definitely chosen. I've also picked the material for the seats. I know what seats I want. I'm just trying to keep an eye out for a set if a set come up cheap. So I'm still, without doing anything to the engine, I'm still hopeful we might be able to hit the target. I don't know. Hopefully we can. Anyway, hours. Now, yeah, I think... Not this week, just gone the week before. I think we only did about 20 hours. And I think this week, looking through everything that I've done, again, we've only probably managed 20 hours. So we're going to go for 142 hours so far on the build. And welding gas on the consumable was plus £50. Pounds, so that's 259.92. Uh, we haven't bought any other consumables. So, yeah, we've spent 2,700. We've got 2,200 left. We've done 260 quid on consumables and we've spent so far about 142 hours on the project. So yeah, round up for this episode. We went out, bought a car. Turns out it was probably a waste of time and a waste of money. But anyway, if anyone needs any Polo GTI parts that I'm not using, hit me up or tell your friends or whatever. Everything else is going to be um, available. We'll just put it all in the car and sit it in a corner for now. Hopefully try and sell some stuff recoup a little bit of money um yeah hopefully we're going to be able to get that in the car although it's not very healthy anyway leave it on a bit of a downer one but in the next episode i'm hoping fingers crossed we're going to get this shell rolling get all the suspension on it get it all rolling steering rack back on make sure everything's going to work and then we'll possibly try and get that mounted in but until next time guys enjoy